All right, I would like to call the Finance, Ways, and Means Subcommittee to order for March 31st, 2021. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Representatives Baum, Camper, Freeman, Gant, Hawk, Hazelwood, Lynn, Ogle, Todd, Whitson, Williams, Wendell, Hicks. Here. I'm next, you have a form. Thank you very much. Members, are there any announcements or personal orders before we begin? Seeing none, we're going to begin with our calendar. We have 40 bills on our calendar today, and we're going to take up item number 36 first. Item number 36 will be House Bill 652 by Chair Lady Hazelwood. Chair Lady, you are recognized on House Bill 652. You have a motion to second. Please continue with a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this legislation removes outdated requirements for cash basis budgeting um, and Basically, what it does is provide for uniform budget requirements that align with generally accepted accounting practices for all local governments. Right now, we have sort of a hodgepodge. Um, some utility um, finance laws are different than some others, so this would be, provide consistency. It would also um, enable the um, a better financial management because the comptroller would be required to approve the budgets and would just be able to help these utilities before um, they get into problems. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would renew my motion. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Members, any discussion on House Bill 652? Seeing none, we're now voting. I'm sorry, Leader Camper, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chair Lady, you said that um, the comptroller would approve or review, you said review or approve the budget that they submit? It would approve. Uh, some of them now they review, some they approve. This would, they would approve the budget so there would be an opportunity for them to have input um, when there are problem areas. And if the... You're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And it puts a mandate on the locals to submit their budgets to uh, the comptroller for review. And if they don't, is there some punitive measure in place? Um, it does they are required they would have to submit but they have to submit for review the difference would be that they would be submitting for approval uh, versus review and they're actually um it removes one of the kind of punitive um, provisions that have been there before there was a provision that would require the comptroller's office to publish a notice in the local newspaper if a local government does not submit the budget for approval. This would take away that requirement um, so that we wouldn't be publicly shaming, I suppose, a uh, local government, but just would give um, the comptroller, again, it's, it's to help those utilities, as you know, many of, the, of our smaller ones, particularly across the state, don't necessarily have the, all the financial expertise they might need, and the comptroller's office would be able to assist them in uh, developing a budget that actually works. You recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chair Lady. I just was uh, concerned about the um, notice to the locals if they didn't submit them, that there may be some punitive measures that could hurt them, but it looks like um, we're taking one provision away where the public could chime in and say, and see that their local government is not submitting their budget, but what you're saying is this is a way for the comptroller to assist them uh, and send them, say, hey, you need to submit your budget so we can make sure everything's in order so that it'll help you better financially uh, uh, manage your budget, et cetera, et cetera. Is that the goal? It is, and it's to um, you know give the comptroller an opportunity to help keep these utilities out of trouble on the front end. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Madam Chair. Any further discussion on House Bill 652? Seeing none, we're now voting on House Bill 652, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 652 moves to full finance. All right, members, that's going to lead us to item number 12. We do have some members 
that have committee and we're going to try to get them out of here just as quick as we can. Item number 12 on your calendar is going to be House Bill 530, yeah, 530 by Chair Lady Moody. Second. Is she here? I'm not sure I see. Okay, so she just left out. All right, let's roll that. Uh, without objection, roll to the heel. All right, members. All right, that brings us to item number 14. Item number 14 on our calendar is House Bill 729 by Chairman Reagan. Sir, you are recognized on House Bill 729. Motion. You have a motion and a second. Please continue with a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This bill simply adds an additional person to the Energy Policy Council, which this body created a few years back. Uh, estimated cost to the state is $200 per year increase. Otherwise, the cost is the same as it has been. All right, thank you very much for this description. Any questions for our sponsor, House Bill 729? Seeing none, there is a small fiscal note associated with House Bill 729, and because of that cost, we will have to place it behind the budget and reconsider it at a later time. So without objection, House Bill 729 behind the budget. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Committee. Thank you, sir. All right, that brings us back to item number one, and I apologize for skipping around. Just want to try to accommodate as much as we can, and we'll try to get going here. All right, members, let's get back to item number one on our calendar is House Bill 10 7, House Bill 1047, excuse me, by Representative Russell. Sir, you are recognized. You have a motion and a second. Please continue with a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. House Bill 1047 requires that a conviction of certain crimes that historically target women and children, 100% of the imposed sentence must be served. Sentences cannot be reduced by credits. However, credits can be used for the purposes of increasing privileges, reduced security classifications, or for any other purpose other than reduction of the sentence imposed by the court. Plain and simple, if you do the crime, you do the time, and that's 100% of the time, no possibility of parole or probation. Mr. Chairman, I renew my motion. Thank you very much. Any questions, any discussion for House Bill 1047, our sponsor? Seeing none, there is a cost associated with uh, House Bill 1047. We do appreciate you bringing it to us, and we will have to consider it at a later date. So without objection, House Bill 1047 goes behind the budget. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All. Brings us to item number two. Item number two on our calendar Item members, if I can have your attention just for a second, item number two is actually going to be rolled one week. So without objection, SJR 10 will be rolled one week. That brings us to item number three on our calendar that has been requested. House Bill 773 has been requested to be rolled one week. So without objection, House Bill 773 rolled one week. Thank you, sir. That brings us to item number four. Item number four on our calendar has been requested uh, to have been rolled one week. So we're going to roll that. Without objection, House Bill uh, 119 will be rolled one week. And that brings us to item number five. Item number five on our calendar is House Bill 1082 by Chairman Carr. Chairman Carr, you're recognized, sir. We have a motion to second. Please continue with a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, back in 2019. This, uh, the legislature allowed for some of these sports authorities, uh, like colleges and everything, to start selling uh, and get a, a liquor license. And it, it explained it was um, colleges and higher education. It just left out uh, the private educate private higher education uh, facilities. So all we're adding is the uh, the language that says allows private colleges also. Higher all education. Right. Thank you very much for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 1082? The question's been called. Any objection calling the question? We're now voting on House Bill 1082, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 1082 moves to full finance. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number six, also by Chairman Cars, House Bill 193. You have a motion second, sir. You're recognized for a thank, brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is just a, this is the uh, the flowing on a certain educational LEA 
uh, that we've brought before you because the, uh, the uh, uh, BEP committee had recommended this. It, it makes uh, each LEA must receive it no less than 25% state share on non-classroom components and no less than 50% share in the instructional salaries and wages components, instructional benefits components and classroom components. And with that, sir, that's what the bill does. All right, thank you, Chairman. I know this is something important to you and your district, and I appreciate you working hard on this, as you have for the past, uh, since I've been down here, I, I do believe. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, any questions or uh, discussion for House Bill 193 for Chairman Carr? Seeing none, there is, as, uh, there is a cost associated with uh, House Bill 193, so we will have to place it behind the budget and consider it at a later date. But until then, we will place it behind the budget. Thank, thank you very you, thank much. Thank you, Chairman. Without behind the budget. Brings us to item number seven on our calendar. Item number seven is House Bill 1365 by Representative Smith. We have a motion to second. Representative Smith, you're recognized for a brief description. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. And if you would uh, pause just a moment and recognize Chairman Mike Carter. This is his bill. He's worked on this for several years. And uh, I, I'm just standing in very uh, humbly in his stead. Um, this is a revision to provisions that are currently in code that allows a county to have a, a, in a governing municipality and a school district's right for subrogation in group life, hospitalization, disability, and medical insurance. This is a cleanup. Uh, he's work, been working on this for several years. There is a small fiscal note on this of a little bit over $1,000 due to uh, correspondence that has to happen through uh, postal communication. And with that, Mr. Chairman, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Representative Smith, for this. And we do certainly want to recognize Chairman Carter this morning. Thank you for, for that. Uh, members, any discussion on House Bill 1365? Seeing none, as the sponsor has alluded to, there is a small cost associated with 1365. We will have to place it behind the budget, consider it at a later date. So without objection, House Bill 1365 behind the budget. Members, we're going to take up item number 30 now, item number 30 on our calendar. Item number 30 on our calendar is House Bill 145 by Representative Smith. You have a motion to second. You're recognized for a brief description on House Bill 145. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. House Bill 145 creates a parallel uh, complaint system that already exists in uh, the Department of Commerce and Insurance for pop property and casualty policy holders, health insurance uh, holders, uh, auto insurance holders. There's a complaint system. This just creates that same process for uh, pharmacy benefit managers so that our independent pharmacies and patients can offer their needs through an investigation or an issues process. This actually generates income of 28, I think it's 288 hundred dollars in the the first year and then up to thirty thousand in the second thirty three thousand in the third so this is a positive fiscal note i'd ask for your support happy to take questions all right thank you very much members any discussion on house bill 145 seeing none we're now voting on sending house bill 145 on to full finance all those in favor say aye, aye. all those opposed no the ayes have it house bill 145 moves to full finance thank you chairman thank and you committee. very much members that brings us back to item number eight on your calendar Item number eight on our calendar is House Bill 531 by Chair Lady Helton. You have a motion to second once we get the podium cleaned up and you are recognized on House Bill 531 for a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. This is a TCRS housekeeping bill. Sections one and four of the bill amend current law to reflect that federal law recently changed the required minimum distribution age from 70 and a half to 72. Section two of the bill adds language back that was inadvertently deleted in a prior bill. It is a cleanup change only. Section three amends current law to provide more guidance to political subdivisions joining the hybrid plan as to setting the maximum unfunded liability. This section provides that the maximum unfunded liability may be no greater than 20% of the political subdivision's total pension liability. Section five of the bill amends current law to reflect longstanding TCR practice as to prior service established near the date of retirement. The section provides that for prior service established 30 or more days following the date of retirement, a second benefit is calculated. 
Section 6 amends current law to clarify that when members elect to pay for prior service in monthly installments, the payment period may not exceed the length of service being established. All right, thank you very much. You've heard from our sponsor on House Bill 531. Any discussion on House Bill 531? Question. Question's been called. The objection called in the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on sending House Bill 531 on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 531 moves to full finance. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman you. and members. All right, members, that brings us to item number nine on our calendar, House Bill 191 by Chairman Halsey. Sir, you have a motion and a second. You are recognized on House Bill 191 for a brief description. And it looks like, sir, you have a, an amendment to House Bill 191. That'd be drafting code 006038. Is that what you have? No, sir, it is not. I have 6038, is it? 6038. Oh, it's that, a tad dyslexic. I apologize. I that's okay. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to catch that. I just was giving you time. I'm, to I'm get starting it. a new organization called DAM. It's Mothers Against Dyslexia. So. <laughs> Listen, he, he'll be here. He will be here all day. So let's get going. All right, members, you've heard 6038. That's an amendment that we have before us. All, we have a motion and a second right quick. We have a motion. Thank you. We have a second. Thank you for that. We, any discussion on the amendment that's before us? All right, seeing none, we're now voting on Amendment 6038 to House Bill 191. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. We are back on 190, House Bill 191 as amended. Sir, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the Department of Revenue helping craft the language in this. This bill allows a Tennessee headquartered company that's invested over a billion dollars in capital and they have not elected to adopt the single sales fact, uh, factor formula to be allowed also with the discretion of the Commissioner of Revenue and the Commissioner of ECD to use industrial machinery credits up to 100% at no cost to the state. So the effect of the bill would allow companies to, to write these credits off of their balance sheets, helping their financial position, but without the state incurring a loss of revenue. All right, thank you, Chairman Holsey, for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 191? Question's been called. Any objection calling the question? Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on House Bill 191, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 191 moves to full finance. Thank you, thank Chairman. You, we are now on item number 10, House Bill 11. 07 by Chairman Keesling, and that one has been requested. We had a request to roll this for one week. So without objection, House Bill 1107 will be rolled one week. Item number 11 is House Bill 768 by Chair Lady Littleton. Chair Lady, you're recognized. You have a motion to second. Please continue with the brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This bill makes uh, significant revisions to the child care quality rating improvement system, the mechanisms for conducting quality assessment of child care providers, the child care report card system, and the child care rated licensing systems. All right, thank you very much. Members, any discussion on House Bill 768? Question's been called. Any objection to calling the question? Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on House Bill 768, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 768 moves to full finance. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman and committee. Item number 12, I don't think she has come back. We've rolled that to the hill, so we'll come back to that once she arrives. Item number 13 on your calendar is House Bill 540 by Chairman Powers. That's been requested to be rolled one week without objection. House Bill 540 rolled one week. We've already taken up item 14, so now we're on item 15. Item number 15 is House Bill 142 by Chairman Terry. Sir, you're recognized motion. for a brief description. You have a motion and a second. Please continue. Thank you, Chairman and Committee. Uh, this is the TANF Opportunity Act. It is a collaborative piece of legislation between the administration, DHS, Commissioner Carter and the TANF Working Group put forth by Lieutenant Governor McNally and Speaker Sexton. All of the spending in the bill is accounted for through our annual TANF Block Grant Award or TANF Awards from previous years, uh, all of which has been appropriated uh, to the Department of uh, Human Services through the Appropriations Act. 
The expenses created in this bill can be absorbed uh, by the Department of Human, Human Services with our TANF funds, and there are no state dollars. All right, thank you very much for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 142? Let's go to Chairman Hawk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and Chairman Terry, thank you so much. This has been an arduous process to get to where we are. Uh, as you chaired the, uh, uh, the TANF Working Group, and we've worked on this for going on 18 months now, been made aware of it for 18 months, been working on this for a long time, so this has certainly been a heavy lift. I want to share and echo the thanks that you've given to all the names on the, on the list that you gave. Uh, I've, uh, we talk about this being a part-time part -time job, but we've been working seven days a week for seven weeks on this, and, and we've got a really good legislative product on this, so I want to thank you for your work. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. you. Chairman Whitson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chairman, for carrying this. this is great legislation. I've been asked, so to clarify one point of it, if I could, and it's on the, on the amendment 4527. And what is a, what they mean by an, another qualified entity in our for profit companies eligible to apply for and be approved for these TANF services? You recognize. Thank you. Yes, uh, other uh, qualified entities could be for-profit organizations uh, for the purpose of this. And th uh, that part of the legislation is if there's met, uh, funds that are left over that we would uh, find qualified organizations to be able to utilize those funds for wraparound services. Okay, great. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Any further discussion on House Bill 142? Members, just as a note, we do have a funding letter to cover the cost of House Bill 142. So. We are ready. So question has been called. Injection called the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on House Bill 142, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 142 moves to full finance. Thank you, Chairman and Thank committee. Thank you. Item number 16, we have a request to, to roll this bill one week. Without objection, House Bill 1039 will be rolled one week. That brings us to item number 17 on our calendar, House Bill 1186 by Representative Garrett. Sir, you're recognized. You do have a motion to second. Please continue with a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee. This is the uh, annual bankers uh, trust legislation that passed the House floor last time. It got coded up uh, unanimously. And uh, the only difference this time is the amendment requires, or not requires, but an out-of-state trust that comes here. They have to file that with the Secretary of State, so there's a fee for that. That is... Uh, what they will pay. So it's actually a positive fiscal note. So that's the only difference between the way this is and last time. So with that, I'll be happy to take uh, any questions. All right. Thank you very much for this. Members, any discussion on House Bill 1186? Seeing none, question has been called. Any objection to calling the question? Hearing none, seeing none. We're now voting on House Bill 1186, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 1186 moves to full finance. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman Committee. Brings us to item number 18 on our calendar, House Bill 201 by Representative Alexander. You have a motion and a second. You are recognized on House Bill 201. Please continue with a brief description. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a bill that authorizes the sale of alcoholic beverages in historic Jonesboro at five locations. Uh, the Historic Jackson Theater, the Jonesboro Repertory Theater, the International Storytelling Center, the McKinney Center, and the Jonesboro Visitor Center. All right, thank you for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 201? The question has been called. An objection called the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on House Bill 201, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 201 moves to full finance. Thank, thank you, you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Brings us to item number 19 on our calendar, House Bill 682 by Representative Beck. You do have a motion and a second, and we'll let you continue with a brief description. At this time, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Uh, this is a bill uh, concerning the crown jewel of the 51st District, also known as the Ryman Auditorium and the Mother Church of Country Music. Uh, it is presently under, under a historic performing arts center with the ABC. Uh, in the 2015 uh, renovation, we built uh, Cafe Lula, and this will allow Cafe Lula to serve when there's no performances going on inside the Mother Church and also to um, 
expand to the patio area and the parking lot for special occasions. It does right. have a positive note. And uh, with that, I'll take questions. All right. Thank you very much. Members, you've heard the description of House Bill 682. Any discussion? Chairman Todd, you're recognized. Is there an amendment on this? Or? It is traveling with the bill. It's, okay, okay. And on that amendment, or at least uh, as the bill has amended, it talks about submitting a drawing of the facility. Do you know what that drawing has to encompass and who has to provide that drawing as far as like an engineer or what that might be? You're recognized, Representative Beck. Thank you, and, and thank you, Chairman Todd. The uh, drawing is for the parking lot area whenever it's going to be roped off or, or barricaded off for special events. Representative Todd. Okay, thank you for that. All right, thank you. Further discussion on House Bill 682. Question has been called. Objection called on the question. Seeing none, hearing none, we're now voting on sending House Bill 682 on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 682 moves to full finance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Item number 20 is House Bill 699 by Representative Campbell. You do have a motion and a second, and we'll let you continue with a brief description at this time. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. House Bill 699 is created at the request of the Johnson County, Tennessee Commission. It authorizes a general sessions judge for the county to be full-time upon a two-thirds majority vote of the county legislative body. All right, thank you for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 699 by Representative Campbell? Question's been called. The objection calling the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on sending House Bill 699 on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 699 moves to full finance. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Item number 21 on our calendar will be House Bill 404. Uh, Representative Carringer, I don't see her. We'll roll her without objection to the heel. That brings us to item number 22, which is also by Representative Carringer, and without objection, we're going to roll her to the heel. And that brings us to item number 23, Representative Cooper. We do have a motion and a second. Representative Cooper, you are recognized on House Bill 165 for a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. House Bill 165 simply allows the jails to accept private funds as well as state and local funding, such as grants, to fund counseling service to assist the adequate, with adequate staffing especially during an emergency or crisis to relieve stress on our deputy jailers and provide um, proper operation and compliance with state law. Presently, some of the jails are having to keep inmates locked up sometimes two or more days due to staff absences during this time. And there have been deaths and illnesses and hiring counselors assigned to jails will benefit in the improving and operation of the jails. Um, moreover, the counselors contribute to improve health and safety for staff and inmates. Counselors assist in the protection of the staff and prepare inmates for outside living prior to release. And uh, with that, I uh, am here to entertain any questions that you may have. All right, thank you very much for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 165? Seeing none, question has been called. Objection called the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on sending House Bill 165 on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 165 moves to full finance. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Item number 24 is House Bill 901 by Chairman Doggett. I see him back there in the back of the room. We'll give just a second to get the podium sanitized and you'll be recognized.
members again. We're on item number 24, House Bill 901 by Representative Doggett. And you do have a motion and a second. And, sir, you are recognized on House Bill 901 for a brief description. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Committee. Uh, we made some changes to uh, a few of the uh, uh, requirements that sex offenders have to go through, some of our local um, or law enforcement agencies across the state that monitor sex offenders and do the compliance that those local d departments and jurisdictions had brought some information to us last year that uh, there were some issues. And so we, we sought out to address those and fix those. And any time that you strengthen the laws, there's always a cost in doing so. And that's why I stand here before you this morning. All right. Thank you, sir, for this description. Members, you've heard, you've heard the description on House Bill 901. Any discussion for our sponsor? Seeing none, uh, as you alluded to, there is a cost. We do appreciate you bringing this forward. Look forward to working with you to try to bring this across the finish line. But until then, House Bill 901 will go without objection behind the budget. Thank you very much. All right, item number 25. I thought, yep, there's Representative Eldridge. We're on House Bill 1066. Item number 25, House Bill 1066 by Representative Eldridge. Sir, you are recognized. You've got a motion and a second, so we will let you continue. For a brief description, you're recognized. All right, thank you, thank you, Chairman and Committee. Um, this bill seeks to place LEAs in a truly tax exempt situation. The uh, current code it states that the uh, LEAs, if they contract out, even if they have bought the materials for a job, the contractor actually becomes liable for the for the sales and use tax on that material, and that that is a, a just a simple change to make it well. It's not a simple change, but it makes it to where even if the LEA contracts out, that the material is still tax exempt. All right. Thank you very much for this description of House Bill 1066. Members, any discussion on House Bill 1066? Chairman Todd, you recognize. So what you're describing that we currently have, if the LEA purchases materials for a project and then turns those over to the contractor to install those materials, the contractor is responsible for the sales tax on that. You recognize. According to current code, yes, they are. You recognize. Have they been collecting this tax already? As, as I've never heard of this. I've, I've been in, involved in projects where the the government entity or a school system or whatever it might be, a nonprofit would, would have an exempt certificate and would buy the materials, have them sitting there on site for somebody to install, but I've never known of a situation where a contractor actually had to pay the tax on that. You recognize. I'm, I'm actually not sure about the collection part of it, but it is in code that the contractor or the subcontractor becomes liable for that sales tax, and there has been a couple of situations where the state has actually gone to the contractor. One happened in Cheatham County. Another actually did happen in Hamlin County when on a project for uh, Walter State Community College. So that they, they came to the contractor for the sales tax. Chairman Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Obviously, this needs to be corrected. I, I'm, I'm appalled that, I mean, the legislative intent had to have been that those materials for a profit, uh, for a school or a project that was a government entity would not be taxed. That's why they give the, the certificate. So this is obviously something that needs to be corrected, and I appreciate you bringing this. Thank, thank you. you very much. Chairman Williams. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Representative. I, I guess the it's, it's my understanding, though, that um, there is means by which, it, from an accounting perspective, a general contractor can uh, um, allow or could acquire the invoices and allow the LEA to pay invoices direct to the supplier and therefore not do that. For instance, if I, um, uh, if I were building a church and church had a nonprofit tax mm -hmm. exemption, uh, the material supplier, even though the general contractor is building, they're installing the mechanical systems, the material supplier could build the church directly, the church gets nonprofit and they, it would be tax free. Do, it's my understanding that the schools can do the same as well. Um, and I, the reason for that is it can get you around the fiscal note of, 
uh, or the fiscal impact to those communities. It's my understanding they could do that. Um, but I do, I do support your bill. I understand what's going on. It would be nice to have it cleaned up, but we've, we've always paid, uh, and general contractors have always paid uh, sales tax on schools and uh, churches and other things because we are, in fact, liable. So, but there are means by which you can do it, I think. Representative Elge, would you like to respond? Thank, thank you. Yes. Um, currently, you mentioned about churches. Churches are exempt. Whether it's material or labor, they are exempt. Uh, private colleges are exempt under current code. But th this bill would just ask that the LEA be, be placed in there with that same code because someone is liable for the sales tax, whether the contractor is paying it or, or in, in a case like that was in Cheatham County, they, they actually did go to the, to the contractor for that money. That's, they said that either one or the other had to pay the sales tax on the material. Chairman Williams. Just for the sake of my understanding, who, who, who does the they pronoun? Uh, Pardon me? You, you said they. The state. The state was asking Yes, for Department of Revenue. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Further discussion on House Bill 1066? Seeing that, as you have already alluded to, Mr. Sponsor, there is a cost associated with, but I think, as you can see, there is uh, a lot of folks that are interested in seeing how this issue can be worked out. So thank you very much for bringing it. But until then, uh, due to the cost, we will have to, without objection, place 1066 behind the budget. Thank, thank you, you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. All right, members, item number 26, without objection, has been requested to be taken off notice, so without objection, House Bill 453 is off notice. Brings us to item number 27. Item number 27 on our calendar is House Bill 1114 by Representative Leatherwood. Sir, you do have a motion and a second. We will recognize you for a brief description. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Um, this bill, House Bill 1114, it authorizes our state agencies, if they choose, to provide child care services for state employees within our state agencies. And again, this bill is permissive to the state agencies. All right, thank you very much for this description. Members, any discussion on House Bill 1114? Seeing none. Question has been called, the objection calling the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on sending House Bill 1114 on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 1114 moves to full finance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Committee. Brings us to item number 28 on our calendar, House Bill 1256 by Representative Sexton. Sir, you've got a motion and a second. And you are recognized on 12, House Bill 1256 for a brief description. So requires a study to be done on the de devaluation of the dollar. Since March 2020, we've had three stimulus um, total of almost $5 trillion. And so I think that it would be good for us to start the conversation about how this is going to affect the economy, the dollar in the state of Tennessee, and what could be done if we had the estimate it's uh, between 18 and 22 percent of all the circulating dollars were created in 2020 so that's a lot and that's not counting the fourth stimulus that they're considering to be uh, between three and five trillion dollars so we know this is going to have uh, an effect on the dollar the value of the dollar so i think it's important for us to have a study of how that that will impact the state of Tennessee and our economy. So that's all that this does. It's got a little bit of a physical note, but. Uh, all right, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. And uh, members, any discussion on House Bill 1256? And Mr. Sponsor, as you alluded to, it does have a, have a physical note attached to it, but look forward to working with you to try to get this where it needs to be. So without objection, House Bill 1256 will go behind the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, committee. All right, item number 29 on our calendar is House Bill 1572. Without that has been requ requested to be taken off notice. So without objection, House Bill 1572 off notice. 
Members, that brings us to item number 31 on our calendar. Representative Sparks, there he is. House Bill 761 by Representative Sparks. Sir, you are recognized. You have a motion and a second. Please continue with a brief description. It looks like, sir, you have an uh, amendment drafting code 6058. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. M members, we have a motion and a second on 6058. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we're now voting on Amendment 6058 to House Bill 761. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. We're back on House Bill 761 as amended. Sir, you are recognized for House Bill 761 as amended. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, committee uh, members. Basically, what this bill does is an attempt to, to eliminate the sales tax on gun safes and gun safety devices. And um, we did put an amendment on there. I know this bill has been presented the past few years. Uh, with, with no success, we thought if we put an amendment, maybe lower the fiscal note down, it may it may help. Um, I've had other members that that want to just take the tax off indefinitely, uh, but I'm really looking to this committee and this body for y'all's input of what you would, what the best posture of this bill that y'all would want. Um, I have uh, uh, Mark Brassfield here that's the owner of the uh, the safe house. He owns um, uh, three stores across the state of Tennessee that knows this issue and hears from clients and customers of stolen guns. And uh, I'd love for him to come up and testify uh, if this body and this chairman so pleases. All right, members, any objection? You heard the request that uh, the sponsor would request we go out of session. Any objection? Seeing none, we're gonna go out of session. And we're gonna ask our guest to come on up. I believe it is Mr. Mark Brasfield. If, sir, if you would come up to the podium, please identify yourself, state your name, and who you're with. Thank you for being here. Sir, and you do have... Sit, and make, sit or at the podium. Whichever one you want to is fine. You can stand at the podium or sit, whichever one you're comfortable with. Either one. You do have three minutes, though, to okay. uh, make your presentation. Uh, as Representative, Representative Sparks mentioned, my name's Mark Brasso. I'm the founder and owner of the Safe House here in Nashville. I'm a retired law enforcement officer and uh, have owned the safe house for 28 years. And I've witnessed the benefits of safes and security devices from customers coming into my establishment and tell me about instances of their home being broken into and weapons stolen, children getting access to weapons and using them in uh, bad ways, whether for them, you know, hurting themselves or neighbors or something like that. So, um, when representative contacted me about this, it kind of rings true to me that this is a very good bill. Uh, and even though it has some fiscal, you know, uh, constraints to it, that the money that would be saved by protecting uh, citizens, children uh, from using weapons in a bad way, I mean, if you look at a gunshot wound, uh, research shows it can be anywhere from $100,000 through the life of a person that's been shot. So if you look at that, if you had one of your family members that was protected by this bill, is it worth the money that would be spent to pass it? So uh, that's kind of my contention. Of course, being in the gun safe business, you may think I'm selfish by being up here talking about this, but I'm a citizen too, and I hear a lot of my uh, customers that come into my office showroom talk about locking their guns up because they're afraid their children are gonna get it. And I'm sure all of you are aware, Tennessee is a very gun-friendly state. We have a lot of citizens with guns, and some of the stuff that has been passed recently, you know, I think guns, as a, as a gun owner, locking up your guns and securing your guns is one of your biggest responsibilities to gun ownership. And being the owner of the safe house, I see that every day, people coming in purchasing guns that have never owned guns. And I think if we can uh, get citizens to purchase guns and give them a reason to do so, I think it would be a benefit to our state. All right, thank you very much. Any, thank you for being here, sir. Sure. Any, any comments or any discussion for our guest before he sits down, Mr. Brasfield? Sure. Seeing none, thank you again for being here. Members without objection, we're gonna go back into session. And now we are on House Bill 761. Any discussion on House Bill 761 for our sponsor? 
You're recognized, sir. Yeah. If I could, real, real fast. Um, I went to uh, Kyle Yorlett's funeral. I don't know if y'all remember Kyle Yorlett. He was the one that was gunned down in Nashville by the teenagers. And that was a stolen gun that that boy had, um, had, had grabbed. And um, uh, Phil Williams, News Channel 5, covered it really good. Um, sad situation. When I was at that funeral, I said to myself, there's a reason I'm here at this funeral. I didn't know Kyle. Don't know those kids, but I said, there's got to be a reason I'm here. And um, when I was asked to carry this bill, I'd done a little investigation. I called Mark. Um, uh, he's passionate about gun safety, to say the least. But, um, but one thing in my research I've, I've seen is no state around, ten, around our surrounding states offer this. So I, I think it could be an, up, an uptick with uh, whether it's tourism. Uh, the only states that offer this are, are northern states that my research has shown. So, um, I mean, what are the bill do you have that the NRA, TFA, Moms Demand Action, and others would be for, but this one? So I appreciate y'all's consideration on, uh, on this legislation. All right, thank you very much. Members, you've heard from the sponsor on House Bill 761. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Sponsor, as you've alluded to, there is a cost associated with House Bill uh, 761. So we will have to, would you like to be recognized? I'm sorry. Well, uh, it's, I've got folks back and forth. Some want to just take the tax off totally. Some say do the ta sales tax holiday. I I'd like to really get some input from y'all. Should I, should I roll this bill a week or two for more discussion and, and find out what the other members, which y'all would like me to do? Sir, that is, we will leave that up to you. Either way, you know, if, if the action that it looks like we may be taking because of the cost, we will be placing it behind the budget. However, if, you, if you'd like to roll it for two weeks, if without objection, we can do that. So, so let, let me do that, and I'd like to, to try to reach out to each and every one of you to, to ask for y'all's uh, thoughts of what, what's the best course of action for okay. this. Okay, thank you. Members, you've heard the request. Without objection, we're gonna roll House Bill 761 for two weeks. Without thank you, objection. Thank you, Roll two weeks. Thank you. Members, item number 32, we've had a request to roll that two weeks, so without objection, House Bill 1031 is rolled two weeks. Brings us to item number 33. Item number 33 has been requested to be rolled two weeks, so without objection, we're going to roll House Bill 455 two weeks. Brings us to item number 34, which has been requested to be rolled one week. So without objection, House Bill 1173 will be rolled one week. That brings us to item number 35. Item number 35, there has been a request to roll this one week. So without objection, we're going to roll House Bill 598 one week. We have already handled... Item number 36, that brings us to item number 37. Item number 37 on our calendars, House Bill 202 by Chairman Wendell. You have a motion to second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, if I may, this bill is ripe for discussion with uh, Governor Lee's mathematician. And when I speak today, it's not really to this group, but it's to, if you're not working the road today and you're a highway patrol woman or man, you're probably watching this committee. And if you were hired after the age of 30 with the Tennessee Highway Patrol, even though this body made the effort to grant 25 year retirement, the men and women of the Highway Patrol cannot retire ever with 30 years and have their insurance paid because there's a mandatory 60 year retirement. So if you're 60 years old, you've got to go out the door. And if you served in the military past the age of 30 and joined the Highway Patrol, you cannot retire with your health insurance. That's simply not right. We should not penalize the men and women who risk their lives every day, one of which just stood at the podium a few minutes ago and, and suffered uh, negative consequences from his uh, service. So what I want to do with, with the permission of the uh, chairman is to roll this one week. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this for those uh, men and women that I represent in the four counties I represent that I know are watching right now, the reason I'm doing this, I need to have a discussion with the finance administration to see if we can get this worked out because this simply 
is an injustice to ask somebody to work on the roads on Interstate 40, 65, 24, pick the number, for 29 years and then be forced to retire and then Tennessee says, we're not gonna pay your minor children's health care. That, that's not the right result. And when we've got a budget surplus of billions of dollars, those men and women deserve that from us. So if you don't mind, I wanna roll it one week and talk to Governor Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. You've heard the request. Any objection to rolling House Bill 202 one week? Seeing none, House Bill 202 will be rolled one week. Members, we're going to skip back to item number 21. Representative Carringer, I see her back there, so we're ready to take up item number 21. That's going to be House Bill 404. By Representative Carringer, ma'am, you are recognized on 404 for a brief description. You have a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you uh, to the members of this committee. Um, so today I bring uh, to you House Bill 404, and this was uh, brought to me by Secretary of State. And what this uh, legislation uh, is wanting to do is just kind of clean up some things. Um, it was primarily relates to the regional library boards, and the Department uh, of State believes that it would be more productive and beneficial for the library and the archives to eliminate the statutory regional library boards and simply meet regularly with the chairpersons of the local uh, libraries. And what they have seen is that um, they're having a hard time trying to get member or people to be on these boards. And it would also save uh, probably decrease state expenditures by 8,000 and something uh, because they do pay um, for distance and all up to 70 miles for, for the board members. So um, this is what they were wanting to do was just kind of do away with that board and just uh, have their regular local library people involved. All right, thank you very much. Members, you've heard the description of House Bill 404. Any discussion for the sponsor? Seeing none, we're now voting on House Bill 404, moving on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 404 moves to full finance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And now we are on item number 22. Item number 22 on our calendar is House Bill 469, also by Representative Carringer. Ma'am, you're recognized. You have a motion and a second. Please continue with the brief description. Thank you, Chairman and members. Um, so I bring to you House Bill 469 that was brought to me by the Tennessee Department of Treasury. And what, what we're wanting to do on this is that the unclaimed property and works to return property to its rightful owners. The bill amends current law to reflect that federal law was recently changed uh, to move the required minimum distribution age from 70.5 to 72. The bill also clarifies that Roth IRAs are treated like tax deferred retirement accounts for purposes of reporting uh, to unclaimed property. So in summary, uh, we're just requesting that this bill uh, be carried in order to come in compliance with the federal law and additionally allow for more efficient processing of claims. All right. Thank you very much. Members, you've heard the description of House Bill 469. Any discussion for our sponsor? Question has been called. The objection called the question. Hearing none, seeing none, we're now voting on sending House Bill 469 on to full finance. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 469 moves to full finance. Thank you. Members, that brings us back to item number 12. Chair Lady Moody is with us now. We are on House Bill 530 by Chair Lady Moody. You have a motion and a second. And you are recognized on House Bill 530 for a brief description. Thank you very much for indulging the going back and forth. Uh, what this bill does, it seeks to offer a reward for information leading to the arrest of any individual responsible for the shooting of a law enforcement officer. The reward, the reward shall be $10,000 if the law enforcement officer is injured in the shooting and $20,000 if the law enforcement officer 
is killed in the shooting. And with that, I'll answer questions. All right, thank you very much for bringing this bill forward. Members, any discussion on House Bill 530? Seeing none. Chair Lady, thank you for bringing this. This is a very important topic, and so it's one that we certainly look forward to uh, working on uh, with you to get it across the finish line. But there is a fiscal impact, and we will have to place it behind the budget until we can reconsider it at a later time. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. So without objection, House Bill 530, behind the budget. <laughs> Members, we're going to jump over to the addendum calendar. The addendum calendar is going to be item number 40. Item number 40 is going to be by Chairman Whitson. That's going to be House Bill 219. And, sir, you are recognized on House Bill 219 for a brief description. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Um, House Bill uh, 219, this legislation reinstates the Tennessee State Library Coordinator, Library Coordinator with the Department of Education. It, um, it dovetails perfectly with the goals set by the Department of Education's strategic plan, Tennessee Best for All, which we adopted in November of 2019. It will allow the department to promote best practices among school librarians and technology coordinators. And I tried to generate a um, funding letter by looking at, looking at everybody's late fees, but I came up short, so. <laughs> Well, that is, a, that is an A-plus for effort there, but thank you for that description. Members, any discussion uh, for our sponsor on House Bill 219? Seeing none, as he has alluded to, uh, there is a fiscal note attached to this one, and so we have a little more work to do on it, and so there is a call. So without objection, we will place House Bill 219 behind the budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item number 38 um, on the calendar, House Bill 1437 by Chairman Hicks. Chairman Hicks, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair Lady. And we have a little more work to do. Oh, this is sports. Yes. This is the sports facility calendar of the bill that I have with the Titans. I'd like to uh, make the request we put this on the sports facilities calendar, if I may. Uh, do we need to add the amendment before we do that? That'd be, if you want to, that'd be fine. Okay. We have a motion and second on the amendment. All in favor of adding the amendment, and the amendment number is 005659 to House Bill 1437. Please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. The amendment is attached, and without objection, we will put House Bill 1437 on the uh, sports facilities calendar for the finance subcommittee. Thank you. Item 39 on the calendar is House Bill 1010, also by Chairman Hicks. Chairman Hicks, you're recognized. We have a motion. We have a second. Would you like to give us a brief description of the bill? Now I'm on the get organized here. Mm -hmm. Chair Lady, this is the one that I was referring to. I got them out of order, and I apologize for that. This one is we are still working um, on this one. So I would request if we could, to place this one behind the budget as I continue to work on it. Well, Mr. Chairman, there are very few people who request go behind the budget, but since it's <laughs> you're behind the budget to deal with, we will, um, without objection, accede to that request, and it is behind the budget. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I thought about just keeping the gavel and just getting that where we need to go, but I thought better of it. Members, I think that completes our calendar. Any further business needs to come before the body. Seeing none, without objection, we stand adjourned. We are adjourned. <laughs>